Do you enjoy going out to the lake or to the ocean, casting your line out and doing a bit of fishing because you like the sushi. I love the sushi. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about a different form of fishing. Fishing with a PH. It's a scary world out there. I mean, the interwebs, people are trying to get into systems to steal data, to wreck havoc, and destroy your computers. I mean, ultimately they want to cause damage to your systems and just get up to mischief. And we need to stop them. You of course need to protect your systems. You need to protect your computers so that these sort of things don't happen. Malware, it's affected you, it's affected me, it's affected everybody at some point. And they are bad. First, the tech fail for the day, Microsoft Windows. No, 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 look, Microsoft Windows is not the tech fail. I mean, some people who die hard Mac and Linux folks may think that Windows is a fail, but the reality is Windows has actually been quite good. It's been around for a very, very long time. There was this operating system called Windows Vista. Oh, Vista. And let me tell you, it was quite the experience. I didn't like it very much, and neither did a lot of other people. Now look, I don't wanna be too hard on Vista, but let's just say that it's had its fair share of issues. It was slow, it was buggy, it had a habit of crashing at the most inconvenient times. Vista was very hungry for resources. It made everything else run slow. You're running apps, it just would not work very, very well because Vista's going, it's mine, all these resources are mine. And it was even worse for people who would have old computers. Old computers trying to run Vista, it was like just, you, you bricked that machine. And look, in the end, Vista was such a train wreck that Microsoft couldn't wait to get rid of it. And they replaced it with Windows 7 only a few years after that. So if you ever come across a computer that's running Windows Vista, walk away slowly and don't look back. Phishing is a type of social engineering attack. The attacker poses as somebody who is legitimate, tries to pose as somebody who is a real person. Could be a bank, could be a government agency, and they're purpose, of course, is to try to trick the person to giving login credentials to steal data. And it's very, very common for phishing attacks to be done over email, over SMS, but they can also be done via phone calls where you receive a telephone call from somebody who is claiming to be somebody that they're actually not. Now, there are a few different sorts of phishing attacks, and here are some of them. First being a deceptive phishing attack. Essentially involves creating a fake website a fake email that appears to be from a legitimate person. Could be a bank, could be a social media platform. Essentially the victim, the person is then directed to this fake website and asked to provide specific sensitive information via email, for example. Another one is the spear phishing, where it's targeting a specific individual. They've done a bit of research on this person. They know their name. They maybe know their position in the company. They could be somebody important in the company, somebody who holds a level of authority. Could be somebody in IT. Could be somebody in the finance team. But now they are specifically targeting that one individual as opposed to a general phishing attack, which may just be a random call. Now, a type of phishing attack that is specifically aimed at a senior person, such as a CEO, a COO, is what's called whaling. Whales are big. They are the top honchos, the people at the very, very top. So they're gonna be holding a lot more keys than somebody who is not a senior executive. The CEO has a lot of power, so trying to target them in this whaling spear phishing attack could potentially result in a bit more information, a lot more profit for the attacker. Clone phishing involves creating a fake email that appears to be legitimate, a legitimate email that the victim has previously received. So you receive an email from somebody and then you receive another email from something that looks very, very similar, but in fact, it's not. And then that email is changed. It looks the same, but it's slightly different. And perhaps a malware is attached to that email or a link that leads to something suspicious. And then somebody receives it thinking it looks legitimate and then they click on it. A very common technique that is used is changing the actual email address by one character. And all I've done is they've gone and registered a domain that looks very, very similar 
and now they're sending you emails from an email that looks pretty legitimate, but it's not the real deal. You've then got smishing, not phishing, but smishing. And these commonly occurred over SMS or text message. And of course, I'm sure you've received them. I receive them, I get them quite regularly. And you're gonna be getting a message that appears to be from a legitimate person, a legitimate entity, and it's asking you to do something to then provide sensitive information, critical information, and click potentially on a malicious link. One that is quite common, of course, is a post office one. I get these quite regularly, where they say that your incoming package has been lost or has been delayed. Click on this to try track it down. Sounds pretty, pretty legitimate because I order things quite regularly, but no, it's not real. And similar to that is a vishing attack with a V. And this is now done over a telephone call, over a phone call. You're gonna receive a phone call from an attacker posing as somebody legitimate. You know, one that I received recently is, um, I have a lot of Apple devices, a lot of Macs, and they called me to say, hey, uh, we've identified that your Microsoft Windows computer is infected with a virus. And I sort of said, really? How is that the case if my primary computer is a Mac at home? And they didn't know what to say and they sort of hung up. Well, that's a perfect example of a vishing attack. And now let's talk a little bit about malware. Each different type of malware has its own unique characteristics. Not all malware is created equal. What's the first one that we can talk about here? Well, the first has been around for a long time. Viruses. Viruses are one of those things that scare people. You know, if you're a human being, which you likely are, unless you're an AI bot, you're going to get a virus from time to time. A virus makes you feel lousy. A virus knocks you out. You could be in bed for days, not being able to do anything. It could actually have long-term effects on your body. A virus in a computer network is a little bit like that. A virus that comes in could have a big impact on a company. They're little pesky things. They attach themselves to other files, to programs, to applications, and then they spread throughout other systems and infect other systems. Think about the matrix. I'm always thinking about the matrix. When you got Agent Smith and he says, the human race is a disease. You're a virus. You spread to another area. And that's a really good example of what a virus does. And then it causes some impact, data loss, encryption, things of that nature. Viruses are not good. You then have worms. Not little worms like in the ground, but they can get pretty hungry. And they're a little bit similar to viruses. They're self-contained applications. So somebody bad has gone out and actually made this thing. They've made this worm to go and replicate themselves as well. And then they spread through computer networks. They replicate, they copy themselves, and then they consume system resources and they just cause a lot of performance issues on networks. Trojan horses is another one. If you think about what a Trojan horse is in, in its old fashioned way, well, you've got a whole bunch of folks hiding inside of this Trojan horse that then gets wheeled out as a gift and you open it up going, oh wow, look at this beautiful gift. And inside of it are bad things. Essentially it disguises itself as legitimate software, as legitimate files. It looks legitimate. And then you open it up and it tricks the user. It tricks you, it tricks your staff into downloading and installing them. Looks legitimate. Or you go to a website, your banking website, and it looks a little bit legitimate. Don't click on it. Ransomware. Well, these things are a little bit scary. I really do not like ransomware attacks. And I mean, these, these things can uh, cripple systems. And again, it's a malware, but its whole purpose, of course, is to get money from people. It goes in and it encrypts a whole bunch of files and it tries to steal people's money because you've got to pay them to be able to get the key to recover things. Worked in a lot of companies that have had ransomware attacks and they can be scary because you don't know what to do. All of your files are encrypted and you as an admin, you're going to try to unencrypt them, but you can't. So you've got really two choices. You either try to go and recover all of your systems or you pay the ransom. Don't pay the ransom. Those bad people are then gonna know that you are willing to pay, so it's not a good thing. But recovering the data could also be very, very problematic. So this comes back to you ensuring that you've got backups in place and the recovery method could be quite costly and quite time consuming. We then move into spyware, a type of malware that is designed to spy on a user's activity, hence the name spyware. They're typically gonna be gathering sensitive information such as logging credentials, financial information, and personal data. A little bit of code inside of a computer, snooping around, gathering information, 
getting ready to strike or secretly stealing that information, sending it to a remote server, sending it to somebody else on the internet without you actually knowing. It's spying on you. If you think about it from a real life perspective, often you don't know that somebody is spying on you because they're a spy. It's all done in disguise. It's all done in secret. Root kits is another one. And these can be a little bit tricky because they're a little bit like spyware in the sense that you don't really see them. They hide themselves from detection, but their whole purpose is to gain elevated privileges on a system and essentially allowing those users to gain control of a system. They can be a bit, bit scary because they're gonna go in, try to scope out administrators who've maybe been looking through that system. You know, you're in a, you know, if you're an admin, you've got specific admin privileges, elevated privileges. You're logging into systems with an elevated account, with an administrator account. Well, this is gonna go in and maybe try to find that and try to elevate itself. Or maybe it's gonna find any vulnerabilities, any vulnerabilities that are not patched in a network to try to gain itself some more privileges than it should have. Adware being a type of malware that displays unwanted advertisements, redirects user browsers to specific websites. Quite frustrating, quite annoying. We've all seen them. Multiple pop-ups coming up on a website. Ads, 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 ads. Half the time they're fake, half the time they're a bit dodgy looking. You click on them, you're gonna get stuff installed. Very often in adware, you click on something, will actually install some malware, other types of malware onto your computer. And of course, there are a few more. So have you been a victim of this? How many emails have you received in the last week that have sort of been phishing? Quite scary. It's happening more and more and more. It's happening a lot in people's homes, happening a lot in companies. And now you know a little bit more about it. You know, the best way to stay safe when you're on the internet, when you're logging in to your websites from any of your devices, from your computer, your iPhone, your iPad, your Android device, you need to get a VPN. VPN is one of those things that is like essential to ensure that you are secure when you are online. VPN, of course, encrypts your connection. You're gonna have a connection that is a lot more safe and a lot more secure and a lot harder for people to be able to snoop and it gives you a lot more privacy. You need to get yourself a VPN. A VPN that I love, a VPN that I use all the time is NordVPN. Yes, there's a whole bunch of free ones out there, but the free ones honestly are not very good they're not reliable, they throttle your connections and you get actually worse performance sometimes from some of these freebies. And I don't recommend them at all. So NordVPN, you gotta go get it and they've got a deal right now for my viewers where you get a bonus three months of NordVPN and a discount if you sign up for two years, 63% off, which is awesome. So you've got to go get NordVPN. Check out the link down below in the description of this video and make sure that you are safe when you are online. I love tech and hopefully you do too. And why don't you stay tuned for the next video? Also subscribe. We continue talking about all things tech. We'll see you then.